genetics is not always black and white. There's a lot of gray area in there. But today, we're going to see the black and white of genetics. And we're going to look at this guy, his black and white picture is Gregor Mendel. He was a monk that studied pea plants and the genetics of them. He picked pea plants on purpose because they have these clear cut differences. You either have a purple flower or a white flower, a yellow seed or a green seed. That's why he picked them. He ideally wanted to work with mice, but the monastery where he was living, the head bishop said he wasn't allowed to do that. So he worked with peas. Now we're also going to be looking at a Punnett square and it's gonna give us a visual representation of what's actually going on. Now I know Mendel worked with peas, I think peas are boring, so we're going to go with dogs. And dogs in particular are going to be Labrador Retrievers. We need to know a couple terms. Purebred, if you have a purebred Labrador Retriever, that means the parents were Labrador Retrievers and the grandparents and so on and so forth. If you have a mix or a mutt, that's where you're going to have two different things kind of working together and sometimes more than two. And we're going to call them in this case a hybrid. So I'm gonna have two different types of Labrador Retrievers. I'm going to have some that are going to be black and some that are going to be brown. The black trait is going to be dominant. That means it's always gonna show up. And then the brown trait is going to be recessive and it only shows up if there's no dominant trait around. The brown trait often is called the chocolate lab as well. So the genotype or the genes that make up this dog can be as follows. You can have a big B or black from mom and a black from dad, and you would be a purebred black. That would be your phenotype and your physical representation of what's going on. You could also have a big B, little B, and that would also be black because you have that dominant gene for black there. The only time you're going to see the brown trait is if there's no black present, so you have little B, little B. Now I'm going to cross a purebred black male lab with a pure brown female lab. Now this black lab got a big B from mom and a big B from dad and it can only make two different types of sperm. It can make a black trait sperm or it can make a black trait sperm because it's a pure black. The brown dog can make a chocolate trait egg or a chocolate trait egg. Those are the only choices. So here is my Punnett square. I put the male dog at the top and there's the two possible sperms it can make and I put the female brown dog on the left and those are the two possible eggs it can make. The four empty boxes in the center are going to be the possible kids that they can make. So now let's make those puppies. So the male black sperm can meet with a brown uh, egg and you get a capital B and a little b. So that's going to be a black lab. It's a hybrid or a mix. Now I've got black and brown, and that's a black puppy. You got black and brown, not very interesting. Black puppy, black and brown, black puppy. That should be expected. We have a purebred male that is giving a capital B to every single one of its offspring, so all the offspring are going to be black. This is the letter representation of that. So the big B moves down, the little B moves across, and that is a black lab. Down and across, black down and across, black, and down and across, black. And those are the hybrid puppies. Now I'm gonna take two of these hybrid puppies and I'm going to cross them. So the possible sperm that a hybrid can make is a black sperm or a brown sperm. And for the hybrid female, it can make a black egg or a brown egg. So now let's do the cross. Black sperm with black egg makes a black puppy. You've got brown sperm with black egg. The black is dominant, you get a black puppy. Not interesting. You get a black sperm with a brown egg, black puppy, not interesting. I've got two black parents that are making black puppies, not interesting. This is where it gets interesting. I've got a brown sperm with a brown egg, and you get a brown puppy. Two black parents, they were hybrids, made a brown puppy. That's interesting. So now let's take a look at the letter version of that. Big B down, big B across, that's the pure black. Little B, big B, hybrid black, big B, little B hybrid black and again this is the interesting one you get a brown puppy okay you had three black puppies to one brown puppy that brown puppy is interesting you had two black parents that made that brown puppy that seems weird if you didn't know about DNA and didn't know about genes that shows up that is a one two three black to one brown ratio a three to one ratio so when you have these hybrids They'll make three black puppies to one brown puppy. 
What did Mendel get? If you take a look at his seeds, and these are his actual numbers, he had 5,474 round seeds for every 1,850 wrinkled, which would be 2.96 to 1 if you divided each by uh, 1,850 to get the ratio, or a 3 to 1 ratio. If you look at all the examples he had, he ended up getting this 3 to 1 ratio. That's phenomenal. His numbers were so good, people thought he was lying or cheating or faking data, but he wasn't. So he was able to figure out how inheritance worked with this black and white example by using pea plants and getting that 3 to 1 ratio. I hope that made sense, and thank you for your time.